Adam Harry from Bell Souls with my special guest. I'm Stable Abe. And we're taking a look at the new Star Wars Armada Wave 3. Woo! Abe's pretty pumped about this I'm one. I'm really pumped about this. this Abe, why exciting. are you so pumped about this one? Uh, so in this wave, we're having the new Imperial Assault Carriers, the Gazadis, and the Rebel Transports, the GR-75s, and these are a totally new class of ships. They're flotillas. So flotillas? Brand new class of ship, brand new size, basically. Okay. Uh, and we're also getting some unique upgrades that only these ships can take. So, oh, so. I like looking at new ships and new cars, new yeah. upgrades, new, more options. That's always a plus. So uh, let's uh, stop, stop stalling here and get inside let's, wave three. Let's do it. All right, Abe, here we are. Rebel Transports, Imperial Assault Carriers, Gazantes. Uh, which one do you want to start with, man? Uh, let's start with the Imperials. Okay, so we cheated a little bit. Obviously, we cut open the boxes because mm -hmm. um, these things are like electronics. Yeah. Like the way they sealed them, like serious business. So uh, it hurts to yeah, open this. I mean, unless you really want to like watch, you know, 30 minutes of us struggling with a box. Crying in the corner. What? Yeah. So here's here's what's in here. We haven't opened these all the way yet. We cut. We just cut them open. Right. We didn't, didn't go in here. We try to get these out. As you can tell from me struggling. Here we go. That's a struggle. Yeah, the struggle's real. All right, pull up this stuff here. There's the oh, ships. Like These are pretty cool. Pretty cool little uh, pre-painted. Oh, yeah. Okay, so that's just that. It's just the credits. Mm -hmm. So we'll set those down right here. You kind of see those in a second. That's just plastic. Move that to the side. Um, we got the rules here. Um, Abe, why don't you open that stuff up yeah. off camera real quick, like, like go over these rules real quick. You can kind of see them here. Uh, these are flotillas. The ship included in the suspension is a flotilla. Ships of this type feature two plastic ship models instead of one. Flotillas follow the same rules as the other ships, with one exception. When a flotilla would overlap another ship or be overlapped by another ship, deal one face down damage card to the flotilla. Do not deal a face down damage card to the closest ship the flotilla overlapped. Um, or that overlapped it unless the ship is also a flotilla. So basically, it's kind of like uh, the big ships, except when you ram them, only they take damage. Only they take damage. Right. <laughs> armament is dash. A battery armament or anti-squadron armament with a dash value has no dice. And it has a new upgrade icon. This icon upgraded is named Fleet Support. So, and then you can see as, as well the component list included in here. So, that's pretty cool. Those are the new rules. So basically, trying to get the ship run into. Yeah. And while Abe's pulling that stuff out too, let me zoom in on these little cool looking Gazantis. So these are really cool. They're they're, they're completely pre-painted. Yeah. Uh, you know, very minimal paint. Not a ton of detail on them. No, but the line work is really, really mm -hmm. well done. Uh, we've seen this in other FFG products before. Uh, as you can kind of see here, that line work is just phenomenal. So, good job, FFG. Only disappointing thing about these, I don't see any ties attached to the bottom. Yeah, uh, you do have a little, a little uh, nubs where they wouldn't. Touch. Right, right. I guess you could, like you said earlier, you could get your hobby on, mm -hmm. and uh, if you really wanted to, to give yourself a project, yeah, really wanted, uh, to, to go <laughs> model on there. some hobby, uh, some ties there. So, um, but, but there's, there, there's two of them. The, the engines are painted, so I do like to call it out. It's one of the things I like about yeah. Armada is they paint the engines. And so. they've got, they come with this, um, this new stand. But if you can kind of see it there. Yeah. Set it down here. And then yeah, so we can actually put, you actually do fit both of these onto Which one is the front? I guess it doesn't matter right now. Matter, we haven't put yeah. that. So that's how they would fit on there. Mm -hmm. It's so, a cool looking stand. Yeah, and that see. actually, I, I really like this expansion because it adds a lot of cool visual stuff yeah. to your to your games when you have like a, you know, a couple of these and you got a lot of little ships going around. I just like the multi-layer look to mm -hmm. it as well. Like the fact that they're offset, they're not, you know, completely equal. Plus, the way the stand is, is positioned, you can you can get you can have fun with that. Yeah, you could have fun with that. Yeah, if you want to do a little extra hobby, um, you could really do some cool yeah. maneuvering. Um, I think it'd be really awesome. Like, they have two models on them. There's no reason they couldn't have more. That's true. All right. So, if someone wanted to model each flotilla as like four ships or something, that I would mean... look really cool too. <laughs> um, so. I know some people say that Armada doesn't really have a lot of modeling potential or hobby potential. And I, I don't think that, that's, I don't think that's true at all. Yeah. Like it's battle like, damage on ships. Yeah, that's totally a thing. That's you totally do. cool. There's a lot of um, cool modeling potential you could do. It's maybe a little less obvious than something yeah. where you have to actually build and paint the models to play. But there's still some really cool options, and it's really rewarding when you see those done because yeah. they're really cool. I saw one dude uh, put like. Rock like asteroids mm -hmm. on the bases, which was really which cool. Was really cool. It's yeah. just, just subtle things like that. It wasn't like 
overpowering so you couldn't see the arcs or anything like that, but it was just cool to see like, oh wow, you model like faces. Yeah. Anyway, things you can do. Um, Abe's got the cards. Let's mm -hmm. go ahead and zoom out and we'll take a look at the cards real quick. Um, or really the quick. tokens first, yeah. <laughs> real quickly, we've got all the tokens here. Um, so these do have the scatter token. That's one of the cool things that, that they do, yeah. Yep. It's this one up here and scatter, if you don't know what scatter does basically. What does scatter do, Abe? Uh, it lets you ignore an entire attack. Hey, if that's you pretty can that. So these things are pretty pretty fragile, but with a scatter token, they can actually ignore entire attacks unless the enemy gets an accuracy and cancels that scatter token out. Yep. Um, so they really need like a big attack to kill them. Uh, so that's just your standard token stuff. Okay, Any? there's no new tokens on your own. There's no new tokens on, on here. Oh, there's the. these are just for the cups. Yep, these just are just there. for the cups. Um, this is just kind of your normal stuff. Okay. Is this a one cup ship or? Um... Uh, yeah. Okay, These are so all command can... one, so okay. they just have the one, the one command cool. cup. Um, this is going to be. You've got your shields. This is your other token box here. Yep. Uh, you got your shields. You got your command tokens. Um, this is going to be your speed dial here. You can see it over here, and then you've got your ship, uh, your ship card here. What do you think of that firing arc? Those firing those arcs. Those um, honestly, the ship's not doing a lot of shooting. Yeah, it doesn't so look like it. it. doesn't matter all that much. It's a pretty, pretty, pretty fine fire arc. Um, you know, these ships can have one, a red dice in the front. We'll go over that with the actual cards. So they, it's got a pretty wide front firing arc, and that's not bad on this ship. But yeah. honestly, with, this ship is not a shooting ship, so, so its yeah. firing arc is, is not the most relevant. This thing. looks like, just from the, the arc and the weapons packing, it better be a support ship. Yeah. Otherwise, I don't know what this thing is doing on the floor. Definitely a support ship. It does, have a, <laughs> it does have a big butt there, Yeah. Um, and it has no dice at the, the rear arc. So it's it's not that hard to get out of this thing's field, be not shot at all by this yeah. thing. But it's okay. not that deadly. Good to know. So yeah. put that to the side for now. So and we've got both cards here. You just want to do one at a time, or? Uh, oh, here we go. just put them both out there. All right, let me zoom in yeah. here so we can kind of take a look. There you go. There the folks home I go. So this comes in two varieties. You've got the Gazanti class cruisers, which are your cheaper, lighter ones, and then the assault carriers here. Okay. Um, they're very cheap, 23 and 28 points. Yeah, so it's super cheap. Yeah, they're, you know, the price of a really expensive squadron, basically. Um, and they are definitely support ships. You put a couple of these in one or two in your fleet, that kind of thing. Um, so you'll notice they've got three hull and they've got one um, shield on each side. Okay. So a, a stiff breeze. A stiff breeze will destroy them. <laughs> uh, their, big, their big defensive advantage is they've got the scatter token, so they yep. can entirely um, the ignore gate, the, yeah. the gate. Yeah, but they've also got the... Um, evade token sure so they can get rid of a few dice so they can be a little more survivable than they appear at first sure um but i mean not... for 28 points or 23 points right i mean <laughs> come on exactly um they're both command one squadron two and engineering two they're probably not doing a ton of engineering sure um, really their role their main role is going to be as a light carrier as at fighter support i mean these are flotillas but they function Aside from being like that, mm -hmm. they, they function like a regular ship. Yes. Like a single ship. Yeah. Cap, not a cap. Well, yeah, as a capital. Like, uh, function They're as not a capital squadrons. Ship. They're not squadrons, but they do do a lot of squadron support. Um, they're also a great way of getting extra activations into your yeah. list um, or deployment. So if you because wanna... they're a whole ship. They're a whole ship. So they uh, they take an activation. Um, they both have just three upgrades. They've got the offensive upgrade. Okay. The um, kind of crew captain upgrade, the captain upgrade card, and they've got the new. Um, uh, fleet support. Yeah, the fleet support icon. So only these ships and the rebel transports have that. Up. Yeah, I'm curious to see what those those upgrades mm -hmm. are. So those are the cards. Right. Again, not packing a ton of firepower. Not packing a ton of firepower. Maneuverable though. Uh, yeah, fairly maneuverable. Good speed. Speed three is, is decent um, and pretty maneuverable. And then they've got just blue on the arcs here and blue and one red. So one pe thing that people were talking about, kind of as a joke, um, is that you could take something like. Um, like 16 or 20 is almost like 16 of these in a fleet <laughs> with, with the red dice and then you could you, you could do the command the firepower command so they get to double their dice basically and you put like 32 that's true uh, red dice with these so people kind of joking you could do like a giant gonzati swarm wow um, and mm. just, probably not that great but it would be kind of funny to do that sometime yeah that's uh yeah that's something <laughs> that's something so <laughs> that was kind of something people were joking that was about something with this. Um, so How are we looking as far as the, the, the upgrade cards? So here are the upgrade cards. We do, of course, have a new Admiral. All right. Um, every pack pretty much comes with a new Admiral. This is General Tag. 
or Tag. Tag. Uh, he's 25 points. Trying to get the glare out of the way. Sorry. He's really good with these ships, actually, because his special ability is at the start of the third round and the fifth round. Each friendly ship may recover one of its discarded defense tokens. That's really good for the scatter. Yeah, so, so you can basically use your scatter all you want, discard it to survive, and then get it back. Wow. Um, he works interestingly with some of the other Imperial ships um, that use defense tokens. Like if you have ships that can get the turbo laser reroute circuits, yeah. which make you spend your evade tokens, Sure. Uh, he can help you get those back. But um, he's an admiral, so he's, he's an like admiral. One of these only for the fleet, right? So you can't use him with like Vader or something, who right, would be a right. Great, a great combo with. Um, but he's your new admiral. He's a little more defensive focused than some of the other imperial ones. It's funny because he's a general, right? Not an admiral. <laughs> not an admiral. But anyway, um, then we're gonna have the other cards here. Let me lay these out for you. All right. So we've got the two title cards. All right. We'll go over these here in a second. Um, uh, officer card. Oh, Agent Callus. Yeah, he's from Rebels. If you he's also uh, he's also an Imperial Salt now. Yeah, um, as one of the um, ally packs for that oh, team. Very so cool. some other cool stuff. Um, and then we've got these four. Kind of yeah, we've these got the four. These bit. are the Fleet Command ones. Okay, cool. So uh, let's 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 go through these from starting here. All right. So they've got two cheap titles. I mean, most of the things that go on this ship are pretty cheap because it's a cheap ship. There's a few exceptions. Uh, Suppressor is actually probably the really coolest one to me. It's four points. And after an enemy ship ends its activation, if is it at, if it's at distance one to three of you, of suppressor, you may choose and exhaust one of its defense tokens. That's pretty mean. That's pretty mean. So that means, and remember, that's not you don't have to exhaust suppressor. You don't have to do that only once a turn. It's any time an enemy ship ends its turn nearby you. Yeah. You can exhaust its defense token. That's pretty mean, just because. Like if you have a scatter mm -hmm. or an evade or something like that, you can shut that down. You can shut before it your down. fleet starts shooting at yeah. it. Yeah, that's pretty good. Um, so it's pretty cool. That happens all the time. It's a, it doesn't do anything against obviously yeah. exhausted defense tokens. Right, right. Um, but they can spend that mm -hmm. exhausted token, but then it's gone. But then it's gone. Exactly. So, so it's actually a pretty cool ability. It happen. It can happen a lot. Unless you have general tech. Yeah. Well, you can get them back. Um, <laughs> but I really like that. Vector is kind of uh, it's a two point upgrade. It's going to be more of the this this is kind of more the Trixie one. Right. This is more of a carrier one. It's when you give the fighter command option, the squadron command option. Uh, the speed of each of your squadrons without heavy you activate is increased by one oh. uh, to a maximum of five until the end of its activation. So that's just a swarm thing. That's kind of a swarm thing. Now the problem is what I have with this is that it's really not going to affect a lot of the Imperial fighters. No. Because a number of them, like the TIEs and the interceptors, are already as fast as you want them. Sure. Um, and it can't like make bombers any faster. But there are a few options that it will help to kind of speed up. Sure. And sure. I think this is going to continue to be relevant as more Imperial fighters come out. They're probably going to get some slower ones. Yeah, they're um, not all five. They're not all TIE fighters. Fives. <laughs> so it does help some things out. Uh, in particular, I think this is actually pretty cool to use with like the um, Bosk's ship. Oh, uh, and the Houndstooth, because that's that the generic. And that's not a heavy. I don't think that's heavy, but the generic one is like speed two. Some of those okay. are kind of. I don't remember if it's heavy, but some of those right because those slow. are those are still squadrons. Yeah, so there's so. some pretty slow rogue or, or not rogues, but kind of like the larger ships that are slow that aren't heavy that you can use. Um, so those are the two titles. Uh, Agent Callus here. Uh, when attacking a unique squadron, you could add one dice of any color to your attack pool. He's three points. Seems legit. Yeah, so he's not going to be useful in every game. But he's pretty cool if you're fighting like the Rebel Aces lists. If you see a lot oh, yeah, yeah, of yeah. unique Rebel fighters around, he makes you a little bit better at shooting those down. With yeah, if you ships. have if you have a, a anti squadron mm -hmm. ship loadout that you like to do, right? Tossing Agent Callus in there, he's only three points. He's only three points. Also, I think as of right now, he is the um, only way you can get red dice as an anti fighter option. Oh. Uh, all anti fighter options that I know of are just are blue or black and red dice are the only way of getting two hits against yeah. fighters. Okay, good so to know. That's actually kind of cool. That is kind of cool. Um, so you got that going on. Uh, he's useful on these ships or in a lot of ways he's useful on a, on a dedicated uh, fighter support yeah, ship. So like, like a, yeah, like a yeah. raider or something that you've got set up to do Ooh, that. Yeah. Um, he's pretty cheap, three points um, is the nice little help also. Uh, he's also good, I would say, if you find yourself fighting like Fireball a lot. Ooh, um, yeah. Because yeah, he's yeah. going to get you extra dice on like Rhymer and Dengar and stuff like that to break up that Fireball. Yeah. Okay, um, so those are those cards. Let's move mm -hmm. these out of the way real quick. So we've got the uh, the new fleet upgrade. Right. Our fleet support cards. And they they kind of break down into two categories. You've got your helping big ships or doing things with big ships and doing things with fighters. Okay, so let's start with these yeah. the fighters here. So the jamming field is a pretty cool little upgrade. Okay. It's two points and it's while a squadron at distance one or two is attacking or defending, 
against the squadron, the attack is treated as obstructed. Interesting. So it's kind of a little complicated to read, um, but basically ships nearby, when squadrons fighting nearby, your ship that has this on it are obstructed, so they're going to lose the dice off the attack. Now that's weird because it, it, attacking or defending. Right. So, so it's it's taking dice away from your ships too when they're could. attacking. The, 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 the strategy you want to try to use with this okay. is to have your ships be near this, the enemy jump on you and attack you, lose okay. their dice, then you move outside of the range of it. Gotcha. Or move your ship away from here. Right? Gotcha. And then your fighters attack on, after the enemy had obstructed. Um, but it can also be used, this is only when you're fighting squadrons, so if you have a bunch of like bombers nearby this, you can oh. use this to protect bombers from squadrons, but then if they're firing at the enemy ship, they're unaffected by it. So it's a little, it's a little tricky to use. You're going to have to be careful using That's it because you, you can yeah. hurt yourself, but it's kind of a cool little ability. Yeah. Um, to make your things a little more survivable. And the Imperials really don't have a lot of things that have made fighters more survivable. So that's pretty cool. All right. Um, the big, this is probably the biggest single upgrade that's coming out of Wave 3. Oh, I would yeah. say. All right. Uh, both the Imperials and the Rebels get this. This is the bomb Bomber Command Center. So it's a fleet upgrade, fleet command upgrade, and it's eight points. All right, that's pretty pricey. It's pretty pricey. But what it does is while a friendly squadron with Bomber. Yep. At distance one to five, so that's as far as it could be. Pretty, yeah, if you're in um, range. Yeah, is attacking a ship, not a squadron, but a ship. It can reroll one dice. That's pretty huge. It's huge. So this is going to make um, swarms of bombers incredibly damn deadly. Most yeah. bombers only have one dice anyway. Yeah. Um, so. Well, the thing is too, that's that's not limited to just one ship or right. one or one squadron. That's any friendly. Any friendly with a ship with bomber. Yeah, right. any friendly bomber. Yeah, and it's a huge radius. One to five is a huge yeah, that's, radius. Yeah, that's like, yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> uh, TIE bomber squ swarms benefit from this hugely. Uh, even fireball benefits from this because it gets to reroll all its attacks. That's pretty dirty. Uh, my that favorite is, is going to be X-Wings Yeah. because they have their bomber and they have that one red dice. So, yeah. But being able to reroll basically almost, in most cases, all of your bomber dice, unless you like a B-Wing with two dice, is huge. That's pretty huge. Um, All right, so the, the next up here is mm -hmm. the big ship helpers? Yeah, these are kind of big ship things that either help or hinder big ships. Okay. So Comnets is a pretty simple one, but it's actually a great option for a lot of things. It's after you reveal the command dial step. Uh, so after you reveal what your command right. dial is, you may remove one command token from this ship to assign a matching token to another friendly ship at distance. Oh, wow. Side. So if you are kind of in the back Mm -hmm. You can toss tokens to the front. You can toss tokens to the front. And this is important because remember that this ship is a command one ship. Yeah. So it gets to set its command ally every turn. Yep. Um, whereas a larger ship can't. So it might just sit back Ooh. there and like toss engineering tokens or, yeah, or, yeah, or, yeah, yeah. Or, or navigation tokens onto your Star Destroyer and let your Star Destroyer do other things. Right. And just be, you know, the, those tokens may not be as fully effective as the, the actual command, mm -hmm. but they're still super useful. They're still super useful. And getting shields back is yeah, huge. Getting shields back is huge. And they also, remember, spending a token does allow you to activate any of the abilities that spending it, that, that spending that command. Right, right, right. Um, so it's good for both sides. The Rebels already had some things like this with Leia and the Tan of uh, Five. Sure. Um, with Tan of Four. But um, this um, allows the Imperials and the Rebels to get a little more of it. Yeah. So that's what they got there. All right, and Slicer Tools. Slicer Tools, this one messes with the enemy. Uh, after you execute a maneuver, you may exhaust this card, so it's only one use uh, per turn, to choose an enemy ship at distance one to three, and you can choose a new command dial on its top dial. That's mean. That's pretty mean. You could totally host people with that. Yeah, absolutely. So a lot of people are saying this is going to be great for countering like Demolisher, oh. which, gonna, which uses Navigate commands to get in and out really quickly and use an engine text. So you can go, oh, hey, have you a, know, yeah, have, man, a, have, have a squadron. squadron. Have a squadron, exactly. Have a squadron now. Uh, but you could also mess with squad with carrier builds by taking their squadrons yeah. and saying, oh, did you want to activate squadrons? I'm sorry, you got a firepower this turn. That's pretty mean, man, yeah. not going to lie. Let's so, zoom out real quick. I want to take a, a look pricey, at, but yeah, that's it. I want to take a look at the uh, the transports now. Yeah. Let's move these to the side. Um, we'll go a little bit quicker through this one because some of these cards are Some repeat. of these cards are repeats, yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, we've already seen how flotillas work. Yes. Okay, cool. So, let's go ahead and open this bad boy up. Again, we've already cheated and, and sliced open the sides so we can get to this stuff. Let's just pull this stuff out. There's the ships. Put this to the side. And again, we've seen the rules. Upgrade yep. icon, no armor. We know, we, we've seen that. <clears throat> Maybe if you want to take those, take, sorry, take yep. those. I'll take a look at the ships real quick while you're doing that. 
can put these in here and we'll zoom in on the ships. Again, uh, similar thing here. Not a ton of different colors, <clears throat> but the line work on these is really well done. Yeah. So you can see here, again, if you remember from, uh, you know, uh, Empire Strikes Back, the Hoth, this is the big <laughs> transport ship that the X-Wings were, were uh, um, supporting to get out of there, escorting out. And the so Iron Cannon, don't forget the, the Iron Cannon. Cannon was awesome, I'm not gonna yeah. lie. Uh, I want an orbital def defense Ion can. That's what I wanted since I was a little boy. Who <laughs> doesn't want one, right? Right. But uh, it's pretty cool. Again, they painted the engines, uh, and they just look cool. I, I like the way these ships come out uh, with the line work done on them. So, I, you know, these would actually be really easy to add a little flair to with some paint. Yeah. Like just like a giant red stripe on one of them. A giant red stripe or, or a blue stripe or something. Or the, the Rebel Firebird. Yeah, or something layer. something simple. Yeah. I think that'd be really cool looking. So. Um, I'd love to see it, or someone could go and paint up the little boxes on yep. the bottom. Yeah. Those are more. supposed to be different. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you could go nuts. You could go nuts with these, and then again, you come with that same stand. Yep. And those just clip on, mm -hmm. just like so. And it's the same deal. Uh, we we saw the uh, uh, transport option, or the um, sorry, yep. the, the rules for the. Uh, but yeah. so. so they're cool. They're, they're yep. you know, not the Star Destroyer impressive, but they're a nice addition. To the they're, plane. they're cool. Yeah. So let's go take a look at the tokens real quick. Uh, this token, I think, is actually pretty much exactly the same. Except the Rebels. Yeah, well, they, they the actually the difference is it's 16 instead of 15. There you go. Were, uh, these are all double sided for Rebels and Imperial. Bingo. Yep. So you're right. It's just the, the number. So that's yeah. the, yep. even the, the tokens. Even of, the tokens. The defensive tokens. Yep. Uh, this is pretty much the same too. You've got your shields. Your yep. thing. The only difference is you. And got, it's a one cup ship too. It's a one cup ship. Yeah. So for um, so you've got the, the the two different cards. Fire arc's different. Fire arc's different. Uh, however, this ship has almost no guns. So yeah, not that important. But again, yeah, this has even less guns than the actually because because that's the front. Yep. So that's the front. The four. Yep. Is the aft. So it's it's got and it's got no. It's guns got a gun. It's wow, got a gun on the front and the back on this version. And no guns on the. the mm -hmm. Wow, and then this version's got no guns. No guns, anyway. at all. Yep. I want to see what this ship. Can do because <laughs> that doesn't look so good to me right now. That doesn't look so good. <laughs> um, so one interesting thing about having no guns is that it, it does have anti-fire squadron. So right. you're never having to choose whether you're shooting at squadrons or a ship, right? You right. always can shoot at squadrons. So you've got two different versions. You've got the GR-75 combat retrofits and the medium GR-75 medium transport. Uh, big thing is these are super cheap. The cheap one is 18 points, the combat oh, one wow, is 24 yeah. points. So these are really the price of a squadron, basically. Uh, you'll see that they have a very similar build to the Gazzotti's. Um, three hole, yep. one shield everywhere, basically no guns. Uh, command one, squadron two, engineering two. Same upgrade tokens, captain. Uh, the fleet. Yeah, this one's 24 upgrade. points. This one's 18 yep. points. And the thing. It's a little bit faster. They're the same speed. It's a little more maneuverable. Sorry, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it has a few more clicks, um, but they're slow speed three. Um, this ship is really one you don't want getting into a fight, obviously. No. It's got one no. blue. Uh, but they can be kind of cool with very cheap points uh, as, and I, as the Manny Squadron buffing. Okay. Well, let's. Uh, I want to see the cards. Yeah. We want to go through the cards real quick because, again, these don't look very uh, combat effective. No, they're uh, they're about is. being support. So we've got your new admiral. Yep. Um, Zoom in here. Yep. General Kraken, who's actually really cool. It's General Kraken. He's twenty six points, and while a friendly small or medium ship is defending against a ship, if the defender is at speed three or higher, the attack is treated as obstructed. Okay, wow, so yeah. if you're moving quick. If you're moving quick, and as we know, Rebels have lots of small and medium ships, and pretty much every ship in their fleet, uh, with the exception of the MC-80, uh, can go at speed three. Nice. And that wouldn't benefit from this anyway. So this is really designed about building small fleets that move really fast, GR-75s, uh, MC-30s, CR-90s. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. And he's gonna give you lots of obstructions. Obstructions. Uh, yeah. Right. So then we got a couple cool upgrade cards here. Let's go through these two at a time here. Yeah. Uh, well, this is the only. This is the new command card here. We'll go through this one first. Yeah. Then. So uh, Tarn Far or Tarnian Far, Tarn Far. She came in the, I believe, the GR, the, the medium, the, the transport for X Wing too. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and I think she's actually the island cannon controller at Hoth. Nice. Um, but she's actually really cool. She's seven points. She's the crew card or the captain card, kind of. While another friendly ship or squadron at distance one to three is attacking, it may reroll one blue dice. It's not too bad. It's not that bad at all. Remember, this is ship two, so you can let your big ships reroll or your squadrons. Nice. Uh, what's what? And there's no limit. And there's no limit. And what's really cool is remember you got that bomber command card, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so if you're looking at something 
like a B-Wing, which has a blue dice and a black dice for okay. anti, anti squadron attacks, right? Or for, for anti-ship attacks. You can use Bomber Command to reroll the black dice and, that one and her to reroll the blue dice and get to nice. reroll everything. Nice! Um, so she's a really cool. The Rebels don't have a ton of ability to get rerolls, so she's a really nice one. She affects everything. Um, remember, all, all anti-squadron dice, basically, on most fighters is blue. Right, right, right. Um, so she can be super effective just be tossing out super effective, yeah. Okay, um, cool. We're going to have two pretty cool uh, titles. All right. Um, Quantum Storm is basically... Uh, when you do a maneuver or navigate yep. command, after you execute the, execute the maneuver, you may exhaust this card to execute a one speed maneuver with no yaw. So you just go straight, it's like a boost. It's a boost, basically. It's one point, it's boost, or it's like a free uh, engine text. It's, it's nice. very similar. So it's pretty cool. Yeah. Let's just move a little faster. Bright Hope is really the exciting one, I would say, out of these oh, two, yeah? though. Two points. While defending against an attack that does not target your rear hull zone, before you suffer damage, you reduce the total damage by one. Wow, it just says, I don't take that damage. Yeah, and that's really great against a lot of fighters, remember? Yeah, those yeah. fighters are only going to do one damage, so you can almost ignore fighter attacks. Wow. Um, you can put that with General Kraken in there so that you're it's obscured. It's obscured. You can drop a dice with your evade token, and you can lose the whole damage on there. So that makes this pretty survivable. Wow, a lot makes of people, a tough little ship. Makes it tough. A lot of people are using this and one of the cheap transports as their, um, as their flagship now because they can hide their admiral in the back <laughs> and, get, and make him really hard to kill. Wow, okay. What else do we got from this uh, uh, expansion? So we've already seen Comsnet. Yeah, we don't that, need to see that one again. And we've already seen Jamming Fields. Seen that one again, too. And we already right. saw the Battle Command. So the only other new one here is the Repair Crews. Okay. Um, this is kind of a weird card to me. I'm not a huge fan of it, um, but some people are really liking it. So it's basically, it's that fleet upgrade. Yeah. Uh, when you spend a Repair Token, or an Engineering Token sure, sure. Command, Instead of spending engineering points, which you only get two, so you're probably not using those anyway, you may discard one damage card from one friendly ship at distance one to two. So you can basically kind of hide this ship near near one of your friendly yeah. ships, like your your flagship or something, and spend engineering tokens on your ship and to repair them. To repair them. That's not too bad. I can see what you're saying though. It's mm -hmm. a little bit weird. It's a little uh, weird. It's kind of pricey to do that once. I mean, and realistically, that's all that ship is going to be doing is if you if you have this upgrade on there. And you're gonna to get to use that, you know, three times a game or something. Right, right. So, is that worth it? It could, it could be in the right build. Um, you know, spending 22 points to take Minimum, off, yeah. yeah, to take off like three hit point, three hits on it on a ship. Which, important to note, it can take off a crit. It doesn't have to be that's face true. down. Um, but yeah, it could be useful. It yeah. could be useful. Well, that's pretty much it for the for wave three. Mm -hmm. So again, the new flotillas are in the game, coming to the store near you. Yep. Uh, really cool, really fun looking ships. Yeah. The support options are there. Uh, you got to get a little creative to use some of them, but yep. for the most part, how do you feel as far as like game changing? I think these are really cool. They've done a lot to buff fighters. Yeah. Um, they give you some cheap options. We haven't had cheap options really outside of the CR90. Um, so there's some cheap little options. You can easily fit one or two of these into a fleet, give you some extra activations give you a little buff for fighters. Um, you can give them expanded hangar bays and they can command three or four fighters a turn. It's a good idea. Um, and follow them around with that. So I think they're really cool options. Um, I would expect most fleets to probably have one or two flotillas. It least. makes sense too, because uh, like you said, they haven't had, between like the, the, the small ships, mm -hmm. Um, which start with like 80 points or something higher than I that. I mean, the, the, the small 50. ships are like 39, 40 points. Yeah, so, so. This, is, this is roughly half those points. Yeah. Um, and it just helps you fill those point gaps mm -hmm. in, a, in a, a different way than going right. to like squadrons or, or something else. Like and that. these are cheap enough that you can take your existing fleet and move a few things around and fit one of these in there. Right. Very cool. Well, that's pretty much it for this one. Let's go play some Armada. Yeah.